everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I'm going to talk to you today about some middle grade books that I would like to recommend. Um, there are three different series and I have two middle grade readers at home right now. I have a 10 year old and seven year old son, sons, and they, um, these are books that we've read together, two of the series, and then one series is a book that my older son my 10 year old read by him on his own and loved and so I wanted to recommend them because I think it's hard sometimes when you're buying books as gifts for nieces, nephews, sons, daughters, grandchildren, whomever um, to buy something that you think they'll really like and also to know that you're actually getting a good quality of writing and I think that's really important for me especially when I'm reading along with my children, I want to be entertained and I want to have good writing as well um, that keeps me engaged with the story. So these three books are um, very highly acclaimed and also um, really great at that, at keeping adults entertained as well if you're reading along. So the first series is called The Fog Diver by Joel N. Ross. There are two books in this series, so if you wanted to get them as a gift, I think it's really great. You can give a complete set um, with two books, and they um, are a futuristic dystopian story um, set in this earth, but hundreds of years in the future, when humans have to live on the very highest peaks of the mountains because uh, the, there's a horrible toxic fog that has covered uh, the earth and you can't really go into the fog without getting sick and you follow Chess and his crew of scavengers. So it's basically like a pirate story. They're searching for treasure. They're searching for um, things that they can use and barter for. Um, and it's a crew that they live together. There's girls and boys that share this um, scavenger uh, raft and they uh, follow along and it's a high adventure story. Um, and uh, my son really engaged with it. He ended up talking to me about it a lot while he was reading it. And um, he also really liked the fact that there was a lot of humor involved where they would refer to past pop culture references that they mixed up. So they would refer to a popular trend that had happened in the past but that trend that got mixed up through you know myth and legend and moving into the future so they wouldn't actually get the references correct and my son found that really funny so the fog diver is the first book and the second book is called the last compass and i would recommend it um, for any middle grade readers uh, the second series i want to talk about is a series about bats uh, my younger son loves reading stories that have animals at their focus, and this is one of those types of stories. Um, and I didn't know anything about bat colonies or how bats live, or what their societal structures are like, um, or even what they eat and things like that. And so this book is masterfully done because you learn all those things while also reading a really entertaining story. So the first book is called Silverwing by Kenneth Oppel. Or Opal. It's O-P-P-E-L. And he's a Canadian author. Um, he is a, an award-winning author as well. What, these, this book, this series of books was nominated for many and won many awards across Canada. And it's actually in some places required reading for students. I kind of hope that it will be required reading for my kids, but luckily we're reading it together even if it isn't. Um, the second book is called Sunwing and the third book is called Firewing. And we have only read Sunwing so far, um, but we will be reading the other two and finishing them up in the future. So um, the first book, Silverwing, follows Shade, who is basically um, a misfit or probably what would be considered in animal terms a runt of, a, of, of his colony. He's not as strong as the other bats, um, but he is highly intelligent. And so you follow his journey as he is trying to prove himself, um, searching for his, his lost father, and, um, you know, going out on his own, so to speak, in a world where he doesn't fit in with the crowd. So it's a great story. I did find it super fascinating to learn more about bats, and we will definitely be continuing on with the series. 
The third series is the one with the most books in it, and it is Wings of Fire by Tui T. Sutherland. Now, these books are all over the place, so I think they are also very popular, and for good reason. They are highly entertaining to read. They are quick-paced reads, and I find very well written as well. Um, they are structured, and we have read the first four books in this series, and there are 12 of them. So it'll take us quite a while to get through uh, all these books, but um, they are based on the idea of a world of dragons. So this is a dragon society. Humans are referred to as scavengers, and we are lower on the food chain. Absolutely, obviously, lower on the food chain than dragons are. And so the dragons rule this world, and I found that a really fun perspective to look at because, because they refer to humans as scavengers and because they make you as a human feel insignificant. And I think that's kind of good. Um, you want to have that feeling from time to time and feel like another creature could be more important than you. It's a good way to feel, um, to understand equality and understand empathy and all those types of things. Um, so. The story is based on a prophecy, and that is that the five dragonettes, so young dragons of destiny, will stop a war that has happened between some of the dragon tribes. So some of the dragon tribes are on one side of the war, some are on another side, and it's basically um, these three sisters who are fighting for the rule of one of the dragon kingdoms. Um, and you follow the first person perspective of each dragon of the five, at least in the first five books. I'm not sure what she does in the next subsequent books since we haven't got there yet. I'm not sure if she shifts the first person to starts it over again and we start to go through the other characters' perspectives again, or if she shifts it to a total other dragon that is not one of the five in the Dragon as a Destiny. Um, uh, the other th the other small caveat that I'll give you about this series is it is quite violent. So if you imagine what a world of dragons would be like, then it is quite violent. There's there's killings to the death. There's fights in arenas. There's um, um, killings of animals to eat them because they're dragons. And there's a very brutal kind of sensibility about some of the dragon's personalities. Some of them are ruthless and violent and dangerous and others are calm and sweet and some are passive um, tribes and some are more violent tribes and some are um, mysterious tribes. So there's all these different aspects of the culture of this of the dragons in this book and I just wanted to put a warning out there because if you have a more sensitive child who doesn't really like to read about things like that that are a little bit more raw and violent then I would say perhaps the la this last series wouldn't be for a more sensitive child. Um, I wouldn't say my children are desensitized in any way to violence but to, they don't seem to find it overly shocking or anything so there's something about Sutherland's delivery and how she writes where you just kind of accept that it's a natural part of their world. So these are the three series that I would recommend. Um, I would say if you like reading middle grade as an adult, go for it. These books are wonderful. Um, and if you like reading middle grade with your children, then I would recommend these highly. So thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you next time.